Welcome back. Okay, so what we want to do now is focus on deforming the terrain with all of the paths that we lay out. But what we really want to do is we want to be able to update only the areas where the paths have changed. By that, I mean I don't want to basically update or rebuild the whole terrain uh, just because I moved one path. Let's say I have 10 paths in my scene or on my landscape. And I just move one that's off in a, a little corner. Well, I just need that one corner of the, the terrain to update. So let's walk through how to do that inside of Houdini. Okay, so um, I actually went and got rid of the wait for all because what we're going to do is do, use a different partitioner. Okay, something that we haven't actually used before. And this is the uh, partition by bounds. All right, so what this does is it basically will create a bounding box around every single tile that we have produced by our split terrain HDA processor. It's going to create a, a bounding box around that. And what it's going to do is it's going to see if any path actually intersects that bounding box. And if it does, it's going to include it in the partitioned work item. All right, so let's actually take a look at this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the results from the split terrain. And I'm going to put that into the first input. You'll notice that the first input is the bounding input. All right, so we want a bounding box that surrounds the tile or the train tile that we currently have, the current one that we're working on. And then I want to pass in all the roads for my geometry import. All right. So now if I were to hit shift V on the keyboard, I get a partition per tile. But when I cycle through all these, all right, let's go through all these. You can see that the ones that have roads that, that intersect the tile, the partition actually includes all the roads that are intersecting. So in this case, this particular partition includes the terrain tile and both the roads. Super cool. All right, we can actually visualize this a little bit easier by selecting the work item upstream. So you can see that the results from the geometry input or from road one here is included in all of these partitions. All right, so all these terrain tiles have this particular road intersecting with it. All right, so it's a great way to quickly see which terrain tiles have the road in it. Awesome. So this is actually going to change the way that we uh, create our HDA processor. Okay. So let's go down here and let's just plop down a HDA processor. And let's name this uh, uh, deform from paths, like so. Okay. And what we want to do inside of this HDA processor is we want to definitely include our SOP inputs, but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to accommodate the amount of inputs in here. So let's actually just get one of these guys here. So if I were to look at this particular partition, this work item or partition work item includes three inputs. All right. And the first one is always going to be the terrain tile. And then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, how many ever, you know, roads you have intersecting are going to be the other uh, output. So this is PDG output one, PDG output two, three, four, so on and so forth, right? So um, what I did is I actually went and updated my PDG viz to show the four outputs at least. All right. So you can add as many of these as you want, basically. All right. So uh, let's go back inside here. That means that in our deform from paths, HDA processor, I want this first input to always be the train tile. The second input is going to be a, a path. The third is going to be a path. The fourth is going to be a path all the way up till 10. And the reason why I am doing that to 10 is because uh, let's take a look at the area when I actually updated the area or the project terrain HDA to accommodate up till 10 areas. Okay, and that's just because that's the maximum amount of inputs for a SOP level HDA. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So what we want to do is we want to create another HDA. So I'm, what I'm going to do is create a subnet here, or I'm going to create a geometry node, like so, not a rough geometry. Let's do a geometry. Oh no, I did want to actually create a sub subnet. There we go. Okay. So I want to call this IP deform uh, terrain path. How about that? Something like that. You can name it again, whatever you want. So what I want to do is copy these two guys, these two inputs or outputs, I should say. 
And we're going to feed that into the, the first input. So the, this is going to be the train tile. This is going to be road one. All right, and we want to have, at least for this example, we're going to have two paths over here. So I'm going to have just the, the two, like so. All right, so we'll do that. And remember that we need to name our outputs, our expression right here. Maybe we get PDG output too, so that'll get us the third input. Cool. So with that, let's actually turn this into an HDA, right? So we can come in here. Uh, input one is going to be our terrain tile, and these guys are going to be all of our paths right here. So I can put a merge node uh, right there and just select all these guys. These are going to be all the paths, and this is going to be our terrain tile right here. So let's go right click on this and say create digital asset, and we are going to just lop that off there. Get rid of that and capitalize these guys like I do usually. Cool. And then I want to put this into my project. All right. So HDA, just so I know where it is quickly. And it's really all nicely bundled into this project. And hit accept. And there we go. All righty. So uh, we need a minimum of at least one input. All right. And a maximum of 10. And we don't really need our output. Uh, you can leave it. An output of one, but I usually just get rid of it because I don't want any confusion, basically. Cool, so I'm going to hit apply, and you can see now we have 10 inputs up here. Very cool. With a minimum of one, meaning we just want to pass in a train tile because we have no roads, basically. Alrighty, so with that, all we really need to do at this point now to get the, the terrain to, to form, if I take a look at uh, the PDG output one, that's basically our, let's hide everything else, so that's our terrain tile. PDG output one right here is the first road, and this is the second road. So to test this out really quickly, we could easily just go and come in here, and we will do a null, and I'm going to say something like uh, tile in, like so, and then we'll just do a height field project. You know, because all I really want to do is just snap the terrain to uh, this particular geometry, so all the roads. So this is all the roads right here. Right, so let's do that. I also need to make sure that I hook up all these guys. All right, so I'm just going to take all those guys and put them into that merge node and then uh, hit Shift L on the keyboard to bundle them up nicely, like so. There we go. So now uh, you can see that we're not getting anything, and that's because our roads are way below the terrain there. So we need to do that multi project. So I need to project up and down. All right, so that's the maximum. And then what I'm going to do is take the result from that. All right, and this time we are going to do the minimum. And there we go. Let's actually get rid of this template flag there. There we go. So now we have some roads. And, you know, obviously we don't want to leave it like that per se. Um, but what we do want to do, just so that we can clear out foliage and texture it differently, is we want to uh, mask by object as well. So we're going to say mask by object. So I'm going to take the result from that project and let's just mask the roads as well over here. And I believe what I need to do is actually drop down a height field wrangle. I've noticed this uh, lately when I import a terrain using PDG, it doesn't automatically create the mask. So I usually have to initialize it. I've been finding. So let's just see if this works. So we say at mask equals one. And that didn't do anything either. Let's do it down here. Uh, let's actually go then and do a mask by feature. Let's see if this does anything for me. And no, it doesn't. So let's just take a look here. You can see we have height, base, cliffs, and grass that's all coming from the erosion. And no mask, which I find odd. So let's do just a mask by noise. So height field mask noise. Now see it's not wanting to do that. Which is a little weird because it should work. Let's try this one more time here. 
we'll do f at mask is equal to one. And I don't get anything. So another way to fix that, uh, we could do height field from file. See, that adds that mask to it. Pretty interesting, right? So I definitely wanted to point that out. I didn't actually mean to. I was hoping that it was just going to work. But that's a little bit of a bug that I found. So just want to keep note of that. So that now places our mask where our roads are. Super cool. So what I really want to do now is actually go to my basic path. And let's actually just make this much bigger, these guys here. Let's do something like 10, maybe even bigger for this particular scene here. Alrighty. Let's do 30 for that guy. Actually, let's do something a little smaller. All right. So now what I need to do is go back to my top network here. And we really just need to uh, dirty and cook this guy. All right. So now we have our terrain so over here let's see where we're actually intersecting so it's this guy right here there we go cool so let's go back up here to our sop hdas and let's take a look that's much better it gives us something to work with at least and uh, let's get a couple of other things settled here let's actually go and do a blur now that we have so we're going to do a height field blur and I'm going to blur the mask a little bit. We're going to blur the height field based off of that mask as well. And we'll actually leave the blur off there. There we go. It's probably a little bit better there. All right. So with that, we've now just deformed the terrain. So the next thing that we really should do is also texture it. But I want to close out the lecture there and get this into unity because we've made a lot of changes now we want to get this into unity and start testing this stuff out so we'll call this out uh, tile like so cool thanks so much